Hi, this is John Kovach of Fly Water Travel. In this video, I'm going to talk about a combination cultural and fishing trip to Cuba. So I have to tell you, in case you didn't know this already, that I am absolutely in love with Cuba. And I love not only going there for the incredible fishing, but I love to experience the culture of Cuba and the beautiful people of Cuba. And one thing that I've had as a little bit of a frustration over the course of these past few years in organizing trips for customers is that those customers don't get a great chance to experience what I've experienced in Cuba. Because generally speaking, um, you're pretty quickly whisked out of Havana or off you know, onto a fishing boat or into a resort where you're gonna start the fishing portion of your trip. And I've always felt like that was something that um, uh, customers really were missing out on and, and something that we could really offer to them. Now in the last year or so we've been able to do that. We've partnered with an, uh, just a great agency who does just this. They organize these sorts of trips. Now I'll be very honest in telling you that this agency sells to other uh, agents like us and so this this sort of trip is provided in other places. But I will tell you that I think that our trip is well, I think it's the best one because I think that we've done some things to make it really uh, special because although we start with a basic itiner itinerary with uh, this agency and our Cuban guides, we've changed it quite a bit already. And something I want you to know is that I try and accompany all of these trips because I think that with my experience in Cuba, I kind of understand what's going on a little bit and I sort of try and guide the guide, if you will, because you've got to understand a Cuban guide in Cuba has been dealing with tourists that come there, but he's never gone anywhere. He's never been a tourist himself. So very often he thinks there's something you'll want to see, and I'll be able to say to him, hey, listen, that's something that you know our group really isn't going to be too interested in. Let's instead go do this. So I spend a lot of time talking to the guides about just how to finesse our, um, our time on the ground in, in and around Havana in particular. Uh, but let's go back and start at the beginning, and I'll tell you just exactly how this, ship, this trip sort of shapes up. So generally speaking, we're going to start in Havana and spend three nights or so there. And I have added a little bit of time in Havana because I want people to have time to sort of, you know, be able to decompress after their travels, and we can do some things together to kind of get to know each other. Because a lot of the time, um, instead of being a whole group that comes to me, we'll have two people from one part of the country and one person from somewhere else and three people from somewhere else. So we kind of wanted a little bit of time to get to know each other. So we'll do that. We'll have a drink in town. We'll go to change money together, and we'll go out and have a nice dinner together before we start the formal activities the next day. One other thing I want to mention that I immediately changed on this trip is that um, initially all guests have been staying at a very big fancy hotel in Havana and I thought why on earth are we doing this? That hotel is filled with tourists. It's a beautiful hotel but it's filled with hundreds of people that have come from all over the world like us and we're spending our time with them rather than, uh, rather than with Cubans. So we scratch that and we stay in what's called a Casa Particular which means a private Cuban home. Now this is a beautiful um, home that we stay in. Uh, we're not walking through the living room of the family or anything. It's got lots of rooms, but we are in direct contact with the, the cook and our hostess and the people at the uh, desk that are handling all the day-to-day -day stuff. So it immediately is a better experience. On our first full day, we are then met by our Cuban guide, and we spend two very full days in and around Havana. I, I probably will miss some things uh, as I quickly describe what we do, but let me just give you a general sense of the um, itinerary. We will um, almost always start by doing a walking tour of Old Havana with a guide. So you, we walk for the first half of the day, we see all the beautiful old squares, we understand the history of Havana, and it's a really great um, uh, couple of hours. And then we'll have lunch at a private Cuban restaurant, and then we might do um, a car tour of the districts of Havana. And these are always done in old vintage American uh, convertibles, so it's fantastic. And then we'll generally have a drink at one of the Hemingway bars. Um, we'll have a night out on the town again where we go out to dinner. The next day will include things like a, um, a factory, a fi uh, sorry, a cigar 
uh, factory tour, which is awesome, and you'll have a chance to buy cigars if you want to do that. Even if you don't smoke cigars, it's just a great experience. We'll generally also be introduced to the, inter the uh, religion of Santeria, which is very popular in Cuba and very exotic, and so it's a great hour or so of learning about that religion. And then we'll generally head out of town, and we'll go to Hemingway's ranch, his finca, which is about 30 minutes outside of Havana, and we'll tour it, and we'll also have lunch nearby in the um, harbor of Cojimar, where he uh, moored his fishing boat, Pilar. Now, two things that I've added into this trip that I want to mention. So and I think this is where, again, I've added a little bit of value to uh, these trips. I immediately said on our first trip here with my guide, I said, is there any way we could visit a Cuban school? I think it would be fantastic for us to have interaction with Cuban students. And he said, sure. He said, I could organize that for you. He said, I know the perfect school. And so, indeed, we do that on almost every trip, and it's on our way to the Hemingway Ranch. And we spend usually about an hour at the school. It's a primary school and we visit with the teachers and we get to know the principal and we almost always go into the classroom of at least uh, one class here at the school and we spend a lovely hour with these students and they are they're just incredible and you will love this and so they've generally had a little bit of instruction in English and so they want to ask us questions and so we answer questions to them and we ask them questions we joke around a little bit and it's just fantastic so one other thing that we do at the school is that I know that these schools have a terrible time getting the most basic of supplies. And so before all of these trips, I reach out to the customers and ask if they would like to participate in bringing supplies to the school. And almost everyone does. So we bring things like erasers and chalk and um, um, oh, drawing implements so you know, teachers can draw circles on the, on the chalkboard and you know, do triangles and all that sort of stuff. And we even have donated things like computers and printers. And that's just fantastic because these schools have the hardest time getting the most basic supplies. So that's one thing we do very special. The other is that I changed one of the evening itineraries because our guides had something set up which was fine, but it really wasn't very special. And so we instead have um, organized an hour, I'm um, sorry, it should really be called an evening, where we go to the apartment of a Cuban family and we spend several hours with them, we meet the whole family, and then the son and his lovely girlfriend spend an hour or so um, playing music for us. And they're absolutely, uh, beyond a doubt, incredibly talented and lovely people. And I will tell you that almost all guests that get to experience this say that this was the best part of their whole trip to Cuba. So it's something I'm really proud of being able to offer all of our guests. Now, the next morning we will be met and we'll transfer toward the fishing grounds. But I will want to say that, I do want to say here that, you know, I've described three days in Havana. We can customize this trip to be anything you want to. If you come to us as a group and say, we want to go to Cuba, we'd like to spend a week touring Cuba before we go fishing. We can do that. We just have to know it and then we can get it all organized. But in any case, after our time seeing the lovely people of Cuba, interacting with them a little bit and getting to know the, uh, their culture, we will then start the fishing portion of the trip. Okay, let's talk about the fishing portion of this trip. So, after our time in Havana, we'll be picked up early in the morning and we will transfer uh, down to um, a place called the Zapata Peninsula or near the Zapata Peninsula. And our first day, we will actually go directly to a tarpon river called the Rio Atiguanico to start our fishing. And so we'll get there pretty early and we meet our guides and we'll gear up and we'll spend the day fishing in this beautiful river. It's a jungle river and uh, we'll be the only ones on it and you know, there's nothing else there except generally there's one little shack that's got um, uh, rangers basically or policemen. But otherwise you'll not see anybody else there. And in this river are tarpon of all sizes now generally speaking. There are baby tarpon in the feeder creeks and these will be little guys, you know, a couple of pounds up to six or seven pounds. And in the main stem of the river, there'll be a mixture of everything. Now, the most common fish that you would catch there are tarpon of between 25 and 40 pounds. And they're just awesome fish. And a lot of times you'll see them rolling and you'll cast ahead of them. A lot of times with sink tip lines, although I've, I've caught fish on poppers there when they've been feeding on bait. 
There are also um, almost always some big fish in the river and you will see these fish roll and you'll hear them gulp air. And they might be a little bit deeper in the, um, the middle sections of the river. And those are, are fish that are a little bit harder to catch, but it's not uncommon for people to catch a 60 or a 70 or an 80 pound fish here. There are also snook in the river and there are also jacks in the river, so it's not uncommon to catch them. So this is a lovely first day. After fishing, we will break the equipment back down, we'll jump in the van or whatever they're using, transport us, and we will continue on about another hour to the town of Playa Larga. Now, Playa Larga is on the very famous Bay of Pigs. And if you don't know that history, I'll let you look it up so you understand a little bit more about it because it's very important in Cuban history and uh, the relationship between Cuba and the United States. And we, again, will stay in uh, private Cuban homes directly on the beach of the Bay of Pigs. It's just lovely. And we will have dinner in those private casas and we will venture out into other private um, casas for dinner over the course of our time here. And we will spend another three days fishing on the saltwater flats of what's called Las Salinas. Now we have to transfer to get there. We have to drive through a national park that we access with our guides and it takes somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes one way each day to do this and that's because this road is very exposed. It goes through the saltwater marsh and with high tide and wind the road gets rough at times they have to grade it again and, and straighten it out. So like I said it's anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes and then we join our guides there and we do our fishing. Now the saltwater flats here are bordered on one side by the, the deep water of the Bay, Bay of Pigs and then it's shallow for these great expanses with lots of islands that sort of ring the saltwater flats where they join the deep water. And you have a little bit of everything here. Generally speaking, there are resident tarpon here every day of the year and those are fish that are between 10 and 25 pounds or so. Now if we're here in May and June or July, you might run into some bigger migratory tarpon that sneak around the outer edges of this area into some of the channels. There are also uh, permit here and so you'll have a chance to fish for permit if that's something that you want to do. And there are also jacks and snapper and barracuda as well, great periphery fish. But the most common fish here certainly are bonefish and there are a lot of them and they range in size greatly. Um, a lot of them are between two and four pounds but it's not uncommon to see five and six pounders here. And you will fish for them out of the boat and you will fish for them wading as well. So we do that for three straight days. Now I also try and organize it so that we get back in time to town and to our casa so that we have time to kind of relax a little bit before the evening's um, activities start. And that means that we will kind of lounge around on the beach, we'll have a cocktail, the water is nice and warm so a lot of times people will go in and we'll have a, a swim and just like I said kick back for a little while and then we'll go out to dinner. And again, a lot of the times we'll walk down the beach to another restaurant. Sometimes we'll um, actually take a taxi and we'll go into another little village and have just a, a lovely dinner at a private Cuban restaurant as well. This part of the trip, again, you get to interact with Cubans a lot because um, like in Havana, we're staying at private Cuban homes. So again, you'll get to know the people there. You get to know your fishing guides, of course. You'll get to know our Cuban handlers that are helping us in this part of the, part of the trip. And then one thing that we do on the last day after fishing is that there's always a pig roast. And this is fantastic. So it's at really the marina. When we come back in from fishing, they've been working hard all day long to prepare all the food for us and the pig, of course. And then we will eat with our guides and all the other people that have helped in this portion of our trip. So it's just fantastic. So after that last day, we will break down all of our rods and we'll have a night again there in Playa Larga. And the next morning, we will then transfer back to Havana for our trip home. So if I can just sum up, I love this combination of a trip. Um, you know, I'm in love with fishing. I could spend certainly a week or 10 days fishing in Cuba, but I am really happy to spend um, uh, more time with the Cuban people and getting to know them. And this is something that I, again, I'm really proud that we're able to offer and we're able to combine that with some just great fishing around the Bay of Pigs. So if you're interested in a trip to Cuba that's more uh, about, or that's about more than simply the fishing, I hope you consider this combination, cultural and fishing trip that we've helped organize. Ba, 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 ba.